most people in America are looking for how do I make a life worth living and a retirement worth having. And when we do this, we have to look at what to do, how to do it, when to do it, and if it's right to do it. When we're changing our business because of the loss of a life partner that was significant in that business, we have to decide do we want to totally get rid of this business of planning for people how to teach their children or their adults who are in business Japanese language, or do we need a break time to not do it for a little while? But it's funny how people in a family think they have the right to throw things away that don't belong to them. It's amazing how the liars in a sibling set think they have the right to steal from someone and their storage unit. But they are not the only people stealing from storage today. Storage managers are stealing from storage units, and we've known that for years. But at the same time, police officers who don't like someone who get information that they like to play with also steal from storage units. And the liars in a police force who have no future might be stealing from a man who's got intelligence, who might have intellectual property, who might have crappy written work, and they do that to try to play him all over town to piss all over his reputation and ruin him. The liars in the American force have to be hit by corporations because those city employees are walking into your retail stores and soliciting people to harm people like me. I'm literally just sitting out of the rain this morning because I'm apologetic about nothing. I'm an old man who doesn't need to get a cold because of being stuck in the rain because siblings destroyed his legal opportunity to get an apartment. So it doesn't matter if I'm making a billion dollars or if I'm making twenty dollars for the day. If I don't have the money to pay for an apartment is not the issue. If I'm not able to rent one because of the pissant employees of your corporation that interfered with my whole life and family by allowing your employees to play in my apartment, steal my life goods and do all sorts of things and then call police to piss on me, it created a new and a beginning litigation abuse that siblings decided to take advantage of. And then you solicited friends of mine to lie about our relationship and that put more difficulties on me. But now to hide away from police officers is difficult because your fucking local corporate employees in a Dollar Tree or a City Trends or in one of these places down the street like a raw store are pissing all over me because police officers are soliciting them for information. Why? Because they're trying to run off a mouth, run off a reporter who's talking about the truth. That there are bad officers out there. And are they not just proving that? We have our proof. The proof is that these local company employees are not participating with their corporate offices in terms of codes of conduct, code of ethics, and performance, productivity type of appraisals, because when did the fuck did you go in and actually evaluate your employees last? It's more than obvious to me that the local hiring manager doesn't really know how to hire, other than the fact that she wants to hire people who are lesser in quality than her, so she doesn't feel, what, threatened? That she could lose her job or someone might get uppity and try to go higher up the ladder? Every human being in America has a right to plan their career. But when you've got swearing employees who piss all over homeless people like me because I'm polite or I'm thoughtful or I just talk about feeding the fucking geese because you've continued to solicit me about the fucking geese. I don't have to talk about my geese every day, but I do appreciate a young woman who's a good, valuable employee and truthfully she should be trained better than the people who are in above her life. And I realize that sometimes you have to have butch bitches to participate in communities where people like to lie, steal, and cheat who can handle those situations, but my guess is they're not handling those situations with any graces of the company. And what they are doing is saying, we can't call police on these people, and yet they do. And the hour employee who's underneath your manager is probably doing that to you. Putting your whole company at risk, allowing your people to be solicited by officers for secretary-like information about what someone is purchasing. And then those police officers are going to property management companies instead of arresting the illegal aliens working at property management companies uh, not owned employees, but property management companies, uh, vendors, and not fucking all over them, they're pissing all over them. Apologize for the language, I didn't mean to do that in this one, because this is going up in a LinkedIn network. But please, don't participate in my life if I've not asked you in. I have not asked you into my life. I might reach out to you as a man who's an executive level thinker and go, I'm seeing a risk here to your company, and I'd really like you to pay attention some. I'd really like you to work on this portion of your training, because obviously it's failing someone. Or better yet, I'm telling you what I've heard from your actual manager in the store, that you're not training people. You're training them how to do the basic productivity, maybe, of the job, but you're not training them in how to behave. You're not training them on how to greet a customer every day. You're not training them in the basics of American life because they're so screwed, apparently, in their homes that they're being abused and they're the ones paying, barely, for the family that's descended upon them to live with them. These are the stories that are coming out of your manager's mouth inappropriately to me. So I might give your manager some suggestions on how to train their employees so they get better performance, but your manager is so busy running around in a leotard to attract a young man who's 
allegedly underneath her version of standards, despite the fact she's married an attractive man and an alcoholic, but you've got major soap opera drama ready to ensue. Maybe you need to bring some of your managers back to your home office on their expense, or yours, which isn't too mad to do. Or maybe you need to send in one of your actual most professional trainers who's higher up than your HR manager or her underlings, because HR managers are notorious for hiring people lesser than them, so they can manage them. It's pretty standard. But what a good executive and leader knows if they've read anything from John Maxwell, Ken Blanchard, or any, even, even Dennis Waitley, who's a spiritual-oriented officer for, or was for his corporation, is that if you want your company to thrive, you've got to hire people who are somewhat smarter than you, but know where their alliances lie. 